All right, welcome back. Well, yes, we have Mr. Jake Capella who joins us this morning to give us his perspective on the ongoing screening for the ministerial nominees. But we will also have Dr. Billy Gillis Harry give his perspective on the Port Harcourt refinery and the demands of labor. Gentlemen, good morning. Doctor, good morning. Thank you for good morning. good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, yes, uh, they're taking a break today from that screening, and they will continue tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, the second batch, which the president has sent to them, so uh, that list of the ministers, the fresh list is there. And, uh, I mean, if you look at that list, you can see clearly the governors are back. Yes. Um, so, but... We also do remember that two months ago, the president, before his inauguration, did say, look, time for politics to take backstage. Mm -hmm. Competence and those who share in the vision will take center stage. Do you see that here? Uh, well, I see a rap payback, uh, a rap payback to the governors and those who worked uh, for him. Um, I don't totally doubt their competence, but... Uh, uh, it's all a recycling of, uh, of uh, various uh, people that have been, they are never tired of, of being in governance, you know. But, um, Chamberlain, uh, I know you didn't ask me this, but, you know, yesterday was a Black Wednesday for me. Why is that? Uh, when that list, the 19 list, was transmitted to the uh, National Assembly, and we did a, a, a cursory look at them and uh, discovered that um, there is no person with disability there. Uh, although there is one person that we are told is an am amputee, but is, is not a member of the community, has, doesn't have anything, and doesn't know anything about the community of persons with disability. But do, do, do they have the, to be members of the community? No, no, they don't have to, but then it's, it's also important to bring up people that knows the pulse of the community, knows what disability is, you know, and can feel the pain of these, uh, of my people that have been so marginalized and not recognized by government at that level, at that level. It's, it's disheartening. And, and I'm beginning to feel and ask is this president sensitive at all? Is he sensitive to 20 to 27, 35 million people? How can you ignore this segment of people? And yet, you told me that the poor will breathe. No, he's breathing on our neck right now. You how, do you, know. how do you plan to? Well, we are going to meet, uh, interrogate the situation. Um, if truly and really, uh, this gentleman, uh, once Neto Ibrahim, I'm told, an amputee, uh, we are interrogating that. If we truly find out that that's the case, then our strategy will be how do we engage him to make sure he is a true representative of the community in the cabinet. But it's, it's amazing, it's amazing that 47, uh, uh, 46 people, if, for instance, one of one, the appoint the uh, uh, amputee is is really appointed, but it's it's disheartening. Mm. So all so, of that number, no persons with disabilities uh, is inclusive. Congratulations now, to women. Do they have to be ministers? Because mm. I mean, one would think that part of what you're trying to raise mm -hmm. is number one, the awareness, mm -hmm. to ensure that people actually recognize mm -hmm. and address the issues mm -hmm. of the community. So if you have persons who can address that, mm -hmm. does it... Does no, it really do no. It? You see, you see uh, uh, Chamberlain, this, this concept of we speak for everybody does not apply. That's the same mistake that they are making with the palliatives and, and all the discussion. No persons with disability. You don't know what I go through. You cannot truly and adequately represent me and put forward my case. There's a saying that who, who, who feels it knows where it pains, you know, or, or, or whichever way it's. But, but the point is, you cannot say that, well, we are there, we'll speak for everybody, when you don't know the issues around persons with disabilities. So I, I was asking, I hear you though, but so I'm asking, 
do they have to have a ministerial position? What if it's not done yet? What if it has to ensure that they are number one, included in the governance and their issues addressed? We are tired of SA. SA that will never sit in the, in the cabinet meeting. That's a very important and pivotal uh, segment of governance where the president is properly advised, where an opinion of the community can be heard, where concrete decisions are made, where policy decisions are made. And, and if you take us out of that, that room, how on earth do we trust you that you will truly represent us? If there's one thing that this president had done that had given me sleepless night and the entire community of persons with disability, it is this injustice. And I think that knowing him, knowing him too well, that he has suffered some element of injustice, he shouldn't be perpetrating injustice so it, to the community of persons with disability. At this point, this is, is, there, is very angry. Is there any room for giving him the benefit of the doubt here? what you've seen there so is no well the only benefit of doubt I, I was i was so grossly disappointed because i have friends around him and i thought and these friends are people who have been working with me uh, you know working with the community i i, I know that uh, the chief of staff will always insist in his event that there must be they, they will call me and say get us a sign language interpreter and i will do that you know and i thought that he would carry that passion so I, doesn't I, I, that suggest that maybe there might be something in the offering that you may anything, not know about? Anything or anything less than a ministerial position is an absolute rape on the community. Even though you say that you will interrogate the senator. Well, we if will. Is, if that's the case. If, if he is, if he is, that's one way to cushion the, the anger. And we will try and work with that gentleman. All right. However... If it's not, as we speak, our research team is researching him. If it's not, um, um, uh, this, is, this is an unforgivable sin. Well, indeed, inclusion is always very important. Uh, you were saying congratulations to the women, but then people mm -hmm. will say, oh, we've had women in the cabinets before. Mm -hmm. What impact precisely did they make on the lives of ordinary women, if not just for the sake of their own representation? Well, well where the truth is... Um, that this cabinet presents more women. I, that's my opinion, uh, you know, generally. There's nothing like you being in the room. Yes, there are people that will be there and they'll put their personal issues forward. No, not their, that, well, yeah. I think I came out wrong. What yeah. I meant is, you know, <clears throat> I think it's just the force of representation. Mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, young girls can look in the mm. cabinet and say, oh, there are people like me there. Yeah. It would seem that that is all. Yeah. Uh, that, that will be almost all of the benefits that, you know, accrues to women. Uh, being, I mean, I'm not Mom, saying that Mom, they that should remove good, them as a result yeah, of that. Yeah, of course, that's a good be benefit. More. That's a good benefit. You, you know what that will do? Do you know what you do to young women out there every time they see you on screen? You have become a role model. They can look at you and say, there is hope for women. You know, and that's the same thing we want to uh, ensure happens in this cabinet. So that's why I'm saying that, I mean, you have also acknowledged that it, it does appear, even though it's not confirmed mm -hmm. yet, that there could be somebody with mm -hmm. a disability mm -hmm. being appointed as a ministerial nominee. Uh, the list hasn't been confirmed yet. You're going to confirm that. Uh, but wouldn't that, if that is all you're looking mm -hmm. at, if that is all about its mm -hmm. representation, you have that. Yeah, well, um, um, one out of uh, one over 46, <laughs> that's, that's an abysmal. Truly and really, do you know, um, if you look at it concretely, the, 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 not appointing us, the president had broken the law because the, the, the law says at least 5%. At least 5%. Okay, so we're not asking for 5%. Give us 2%. Give us 1%. Give us a concrete, visible 1% mm. that we can... What sort of disabilities are you looking at, though? Because some people will say, well, I can't see properly. Mm -hmm. That's a disability. Mm -hmm. I mean, m m some of them are wearing glasses. Yeah. What sort of disability do you really want to see represented there? It, it doesn't really matter whether it's Down syndrome or the blind or uh, someone uh, who, who has physical uh, disability, um, whether it's albinism. 
I really don't care what type, as long as the type is represented in that room. That's what matters to us. And then we will work with this person, and preferably somebody that have identified with the community. Somebody that we can reach don't forget. and says, please put this forward. Yes, sir. This don't, is, don't, this forget. Right. don't forget that this person, whoever this person is, I mean, all the groups of people you're looking at, they won't, they're not going to be sent to the Ministry of Disability. They're going to be making, how will I put it now, policies that affect everyone, regardless, I mean, young people, children, women, men, old people, all categories that, of people are the people that, you know, their policies will affect. That's exactly what we're saying, because... We have the capacity to function in every given area. In fact, it will be exclusion taking somebody with disability and say, oh, go to Ministry of Disability or Ministry of Humanitarian. No, that's not what we are asking for. We have the capacity to function in every given opportunity. Trust me. And they are very qualified, young, vibrant people that can do the job. We okay. want to be part of governance, not just for being part of it, but we want to contribute to nation building. Are you also making this demand at the level of state government? Oh yes, oh yes. I've written to all the government houses even before the governors arrived there. I've written to all of them and I have proof. And so, some of them have actually written back to commit to ensuring that they will appoint persons with disability as commissioners in their cabinet. So we're right. not just pushing the president, we're pushing the governors. We're not just pushing the governors, we are pushing also the ministers that will come in they, when they will start appointing heads of parastatals. We are interested in every area of governance, including the local government. I am much more determined to push more persons with disability to become local government chairmen and councillors. I'm very, very determined, and it will be a, it's a tax that must be done. All right. Uh, well, Keep tabs on that one, but um, uh, several. Wait, other than that, I mean, do you have any other concerns in terms of expectations from the president, at least from the performance and the list of the ministers' release, them hitting the ground running, as we always say? Well, I, the only concern I have, uh, Chamberlain, is that I thought that this president was going to have a small government. Um, um, I, I, the last time I checked, Buhari's uh, ministerial list, I think, was 44. This is 47. For heaven's sake, where are we going? Where, is it, where are we going with that, kind, with that, that number of people? Uh, look at the cost. All of these people are going to appoint eight. Some of them will appoint 10. You can imagine that, how much it will cost. And guess what? When a minister is at the airport, the whole ministry is closed. Everybody goes to the airport. Check the, no, check the uh, volume of fuel that they are going to spend going to the airport well, they, and all that. They also so suggested that. What if they merge ministries or create new ministries, for instance? Creating more, mi more, more ministries is uh, an addition. It's not a subtraction. Uh, merging more ministries with 47 ministers, I don't know uh, what kind of ministry you're going to get. So I guess we'll wait and see what the big plan is. Well, uh, well we wait and see. Uh, but this game of wait and see does not help in perception. And once the people perception start tilting negatively, it is not good for any government. So Mr. President, I don't I don't mind you this morning sending one extra person to complete that list. Oh yes, you will say, well I'm still talking about small government, but please represent us. Let's have one of us in your cabinet that will be proud to say Yes, you have done something that touched the hearts of the community of persons with disability. You can do it.